Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today I'm going to bring you reviews of a couple of cassettes from that powerhouse, that industrial giant, that country well known for making fantastic cassettes. Spain. Yeah, that's where I thought. Spain. Well, here we go. Socky Mag. Sounds like, I don't know, it's not, it's not exactly a name that you think, yes, that screams out high quality Socky Mag, but supposedly it's short for Societia Magnetico, so it does make kind of sense. And if we look at the back, sure enough, made in Spain, high quality unrecorded. And the other one we're going to look at today is Tudor. A very good Spanish name, not something you'd really uh, associate with Britain, Tudors, would you? But yes, Tudor, another Spanish cassette, supposedly. But again, high position, this is a high chrome type too. And yet, this, I have to point out something on the back of this. And I was reading this, I went, hmm, this Tudor, chrome dioxide. Oh, chrome dioxide, not chrome. Chrome dioxide, that's very specific. And this one is made in the EEC. Maybe it's because they didn't want them to say, oh, it's made in Spain, but I mean, certainly the language is English and then Spanish, but made in the EEC. Hmm. And we'll go into a bit more of my thoughts about these. Now, these are not common tapes, and... They're not tapes that really I've seen a lot written about. Um, so I've sort of taken a fly, flying jump on these and hoping that they're not terrible because, let's be honest, just looking at them, what have we got? With, I mean, the Tudor wrapper seems okay, but playing cassette underneath, the Socky Mag looks uh, nicely retro, I'd say, but let's be honest here, it doesn't look like an SA, does it? But, well, I guess it doesn't. It sort of mimics the style a bit, but that'll all come unraveled when we open one. But I got them because even though, yes, I am a nasty cassette dealer driving prices up, I like to think I'm not because I'm only selling them at the sort of market value. And sometimes if you just want to look at my expensive cassettes, it's because them cassettes were always expensive and they're rare now. And really, I don't sell them at a premium over what they go for on eBay, really. But when I can get some good stuff in at a good price, you know, like I have the cheapest currently Type 2s in the world, which you can get for like £2.29 each, sealed, Fuji. You know, when I get stuff in at a good price, I like to pass it on because I am really a tape head myself and I record lots and lots. So I took a punt on these because everyone's always going, oh, I want some Type 2s. Type 2s are too expensive. So I managed to get myself quite a few of these. And when I get them at a good price, I'm going to pass it on to you guys for a good price. But I'm not going to sell them if they're junk. So that's why I'm doing this video to see, are these junk? Have I just bought a lot of tapes that I'm going to basically strip the tapes out, sell the shells on the J-cards, or are these actually decent, undiscovered gems? So I'm going to start off first with the Socky Mag. Let's see what this tape is all about. Okay, so I'm going to be using my Iowa ADS 950 for this one. In fact, uh, I'm going to use something a bit better afterwards to get a full appreciation of the tape. But the reason I'm using the ADS-950 is because of the inbuilt test tones and the inbuilt VU, which I can see how things level. So I've reset this to the same bias that it would have for the 1988 UX that I've calibrated this test for. I'm going to have a look at the Socky Mag first. Now, as a tape, I think it looks retro kitsch. You know, if you say someone, draw me a picture of an audio tape, they probably draw something that looked a bit like this, plain black shell. The actual design on the shell itself sort of reminds me of the 1985 TDKs, which is probably around about when this date tape, this tape dates from. Um, the little silver sticker across the bottom, well, it's not really a silver sticker, it's just a, a plain paper label on this to give the effect, but uh, all in all, it doesn't look a bad tape, and at least it has a screwed shell which is good. Now, calibration-wise, how do I think this is going to compare to what the deck set up for the UX? 
I'd imagine this is going to be needing level mm, bias, probably needing plenty of negative bias. In fact, I'm not holding out a great deal of hope for this, but let's see how it performs. Nice and quiet for the fast forwarding, no squeaking. That's a good sign. Right, let's get this calibrated and see where it stands. Yeah, so as predicted, it's down on the UX, but that was only to be expected. But the level and the bias are quite similar, so it's not like we have zero level and zero bias. So if we just crank the record sensitivity up, let's get the level right first. Okay, we're on the right level, and in fact, on the right level, it's a bit bright, so we need to add some bias. Let's add some positive bias. And we're about there, really. So, uh, yeah, that's not as terrible as I thought. So let's see how the actual tape performs now when we do a bit of recording. So we can hear the hiss. Let's play a bit of music. Okay, it's a bit quiet. Let's turn this up because it's only at plus seven. Peaking at zero now. Let's compare it to the source. Listen for the hi hats. Back to the tape. This is sounding a lot better than it should. Okay, that sounded pretty good to me. That did sound good, a lot better than I was expecting from, you know, the caliber of the tape. That sounds well. Let's just have a little look at the tape itself. Now, this is a very dark tape. There's no brown in this. It looks, looks almost blue in color. It doesn't smell of chrome, but to be honest, that sort of levels and stuff with the calibration, I would have expected this to be a chrome, but it doesn't smell of it um, unless it's very, very doped in cobalt. But that didn't sound bad at all. That sounded pretty good. In fact, let's put it in a better deck and see how far we can really take it. Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of recording on my NAC DR10 which is a discreet three-head knack with pad lifter. Again, dual capstan. So let's try the Socky Mag first. I've already calibrated it up because this doesn't have inbuilt tones and it doesn't have the VU meter. I've used my ears and some test tones and it's got a bit of negative bias, but this isn't calibrated to the same tapes as my Iowa is. So let's just have a little bit of a record of it. And straight away, I can hear a lot of hiss here. So perhaps we're going to use Dolby at some point, but let's have a see how it copes.
good. We've got a lot of top end up there, and the bass is still there. But I'm thinking, let's try it with some Dolby. Let's put Dolby B on. I mean, yeah, I've used a lot of cassettes that sound a lot worse than that. That is surprising. I'm, uh, I'm happy with the results there. So the Socky Mag, well, not bad at all. I mean, yeah, on a higher end deck, it did benefit from having Dolby on it. But what can I say for a tape of this caliber, i.e. it doesn't have any. Of this vintage, of this price, it performed steadily, and I think it performed really well. I was very impressed with it. So, let's have a look next at the Tudor. Let's see how this one performs. Okay, so we're back on the Iowa again, and this time we're gonna have a go at the Tudor. Now again, this is very black, almost blue tape. It doesn't seem very brown. This is definitely dealt with something. I mean, like I say, if it wasn't for the sniff test, I'd be inclined to say this is a pure chrome, but it doesn't smell like a chrome. Now, the shell itself is perfectly decent, I guess. It's pretty solid. I mean, it's no worse than the current Max OUR or the ones that like RTM or NAC are put in theirs and it's an unspectacular shell. In fact, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see, but like the record the Masters Fox, this isn't around the guiding pin neither. It's like almost these shells from Italy have had this loading problem for a long time because I believe this is a 90s tape. Now, there's just this sticker on it. There's no signification Signification, is that is, is that a new word? There's no signs whether this is side A or side B. They're just the same on both sides. But, as it goes, it's an okay shell. Let's see how this calibrates up compared to the Socky Mag. Now, this is reset to zero again. Let's have a look what the levels are compared to UX. Yeah, this is, this is even lower than the uh, than the Socky Mag, this has even less level. So I'm gonna need to crank the rec level up a lot here. Wow, that is, yeah, that's a fair bit. But now it's stable, let's give it a touch of positive bias. Yeah, I'd say that's about right, but the, the level there is nearly at full. So if you're gonna be using these tapes on the deck which doesn't have calibration features, it's gonna be quiet, but so are lots of other tapes that are fantastic. I'm not saying this is fantastic. Here's a hiss. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like.
let's crank this up a bit. Now we're at plus four peak, which an SA, a UX, an XL2 I have no problem with. This tape is distorting. It is distorting. So let's take it back down. Zero. This is quite happy. Push it to plus four, plus six. Starts to distort, but listen to the bass. Hmm, interesting. Let's try it in the neck. Okay, let's try it out now in the DR10. I've calibrated it already to my ears and signals and it's it's got a bit of negative, but this is calibrated to an SA as opposed to the UX. So let's try the Tudor in there. Let's see how it performs in this deck. Okay, let's play some music. Say, let's record some music. Let's see if this distorts on the neck is like it did on the Iowa. with a bit of Dolby B. I think I've got a theory. So what's the theory then? Well, when you don't really know, you've got to go with the evidence you've got. Now, this tape is uh, loaded the, the wrong way round. And the only other company I can think that used to do that is possibly, oh, oh look at this one. This one's loaded the, long, the wrong way round. And, and this has got a very distinct word on it, Crom, crom dioxide. Is that anywhere on this? Is it? Oh, oh, Crom, crom dioxide and uh, loaded the wrong way around. 
Hang on. Wait a minute. Those hubs, those those hubs look very distinctive, don't they? Let's um Oh, oh, oh. Let's let's have a look at those those hubs. So, we've got identical hubs, chrome dioxide, low levels, distorts above 0 dB really. Very black tape. Hmm. I'm not going to sit my neck out and bet my life on this, but uh, you know these Studio Master Super Chromes that are currently like $5 a piece from ATR and from NAC? Um, me thinking this could possibly, because again, it doesn't say made in Spain, it says made in the EEC, chrome dioxide, in the wrong way around, those hubs. I'm going to surmise from the performance of this that this is loaded with BASF Duplicator Type 2. And at this point, these cassettes are probably going to start getting expensive because the $5 a piece from ATR and the $5 from, uh, from NAC as well, and they're running out. But here's the thing, ladies and germs. Between this which I'm not sure of the origins of this one at all. It doesn't perform quite the same as the Tudor, but it does take more level. So I'd be inclined to say this has some cobalt doping to it. But the Tudor itself, if it wasn't for the fact it doesn't have the waxy smell, I'd be convinced that the Tudor's a pure chrome. It might be. They might just have used a different binder on this so it doesn't have that smell. But either way, as we heard... Especially with the Tudor, even though you couldn't take the levels really high, it did sound really good. And it didn't need Dolby quite as much as this did. This is still a very decent Type 2. If I got this in a shell from ATR or Tape Line or, uh, you know, um, NAC, and they said it's a Type 2, I I'd say, yeah, fair enough. A new stop Type 2, it's not going to be the greatest tape in the world you know, but uh, it does work and it does sound good. And I like the retro kitsch colour of this and the way that it's designed. I like that. But this one, this one, yeah, this is a very good cassette and it performs like a pure chrome to me. And I'm very happy with these. Even though it's in a low rent shell, which doesn't seem to have been fed properly. Like I say, I believe that BASF is something to do with this. It's just... The way it's loaded, them hubs, and the way it performs. Like I say, it's just missing the smell for me, but yeah, these are very good. And this is where my Christmas present comes to you all. Because right now, after this video, and this is Christmas Eve 2018, I'm going to put these up for sale on my site, cassettecomeback.com. And these I'm going to put up as the cheapest sealed type 2 in the world and this is the cheapest sealed pure chrome because I'm, I'm convinced it is from the way it performs pure chrome in the world so have a great Christmas and a happy new year and go out and treat yourself to some of these because like I say if I can get them at a great price I'm going to sell them at a great price because I am a tape head I love recording and I want you guys to too. You want a vintage XL2, you're going to pay for it. But if you want just a good, decent, because you've heard them, type two to record, go over to cassettecomeback.com and look out for these two bad boys because I'm going to be giving them at world-beating prices. Thanks a lot for listening. Take care. Bye.